Our father was a practical man. He had six of us. And uh, after the war, he called us together and showed us the ruins of the Biafran War, the Nigerian Biafran War, and told us that science was the answer. Yeah, he told us that clearly. So we pursued different aspects of science. In the end, there were three doctors from him, one engineer, and one who does architecture, and a business person. Oh, wow. That's, that's a good one. I'm sure they, 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 they were very proud before they left Mother Earth. They were really proud of you. They were grateful and proud, yes. Anyway, I still want to go. You have pursued science in a very extraordinary way for me. You were the CEO of uh, Applied Bio, uh, Biotech. Biotech. I know that uh, it works both here in Nigeria and abroad. Uh, that's uh, in America precisely, right? Or do that's you correct. have it all the places? Um, in Ghana as well, but the Ghana branch is on, at the moment on hold. Okay. Now I want to know, uh, some of the persons would just be you know, content doing this and earning money, but you have gone deep down into research. What is the pro uh, propelling factor for you? Research holds the key to insights, to understanding, and to building those solutions I talked about earlier. So research helps us to hone and practicalize the theories that are taught. So the companies I founded, the non-profit and for-profit, Plant Biotech Nigeria was the first biotech company in Nigeria, founded in 2006. Then Applied Biotech USA, soon after that, and the Ghana one also, but that's just crawling up. The goal is not just to train the next generation professionals, but also to create products that would help solve a lot of societal challenges. We're working on it. I know that uh, at a, a certain forum, I have heard that uh, biotech and research coming from it can actually help with agriculture and health. You know, can you put more light on that? Because um, there's a seemingly scarcity of food, so to speak, in Nigeria at the moment. Food security, with a population, the world population that's already at 8 billion and pushing towards 10 billion, by 2050, we must double food production. And that requires technology, a lot of technology. So part of what I do is actually train people in agric biotechnology. And there's been this controversy about GMOs and non-GMOs. The truth is, it's just common sense that you need technology. The earth isn't expanding, but the number of people are exploding. In 1963, there were just 3 billion people on Earth. And now we have 8 billion pushing towards 10. The world didn't increase or double. So it just makes sense to know that we must use technology to increase food output. So that's what we do in biotechnology. There are many facets of agrobiotechnology. But I know the Nigerians have been talking about engineering plants and seeds and all that. But there are aspects that involve microorganisms. It's because without the microbes and the fertile soil, it doesn't matter how you engineer the plant, it's not going to do well. So GMOs still need fertile soils. So that's part of what we do in my company. We help to create bioinoculants, microbiomes, that help those plants, whether they be GMO or non-GMO, to flourish and to increase yield, and also to be resilient to pests. With climate change, there is only one thing that is sure, change. And that is also comes with increase in pests and post-harvest losses. So in biotechnology, agrobiotech, we develop means of preserving foods. In fact, the very engineering of those crops allows them to be resilient to pests, helps them keep after they are harvested. So there are many other protocols that we also use. Now, in terms of health, all of the um, vaccines that we use during the COVID time is a product of biotechnology research. Uh, in environment also, environmental resilience, bioremediation, all of that is what we do. Um, producing and finding ways to source track pollution and to stop it. Rapid detection of pathogens is a very strong passion of mine that I pursue both in the university and in my companies. We work on qPCR protocols, developing probes and PNA protocols. So many of that we do in the lab to help because if we can rapidly detect pathogens, 
then we can control them easily. Definitely. Now, I know 